What's up guys? How are you all doing? Hey, welcome to another video. Today we're going to be checking out the ESP32 camera module. This one is the AI Thinker module. We're going to have a few videos on this one, but today's video we're going to check out how to cause it to go to sleep and go into low power mode and then wake up take a picture of whatever's in front of it, and then have it upload to an FTP. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in, stay tuned because it's coming up right here, right now on M.I. Sperry. Okay guys, so here is the coding section of what we're gonna be doing. So what I've got here is I'm using VS Code for this one. You can use the Arduino platform, that's totally fine. I like VS Code because I like being able to integrate uh, VI, VIM, uh, which is enhanced uh, VI, and all the other stuff, because yeah, I'm, I'm one of those people that uses VI. But um, also, uh, it comes with Platform IO. That's what we're going to be utilizing. You can just Google around how to install Platform IO. It's actually really simple. You just go to your uh, extensions and choose Platform IO, and it installs it. So pretty simple. But I'm going to have all of this code up on to my GitHub. So link down below in the description. So that way you guys can check it out. But basically, it's going to be a fairly simple uh, code to get this all going. So what we're going to do is in the beginning, we'll have our includes like we normally do. And here's our setup script. So in our setup, we're going to turn off the brown brownout detection because it can kind of get in the way uh, of when the startup happens for this uh specific module go ahead and set our uh serial to begin and then the first thing we're gonna do is initialize the sd card now on these little modules they do have a flash right a really really bright white led right so now me personally I'm, i don't want to use the flash um i'm we're probably gonna be adding maybe some infrared uh leds to this or something like that in later videos but I don't want to use that flash. I want that flash to stay quiet as well as also it is connected to pin D4 and pin D4 is also used as the enable uh, pin, I believe, I believe it's enable for the SD card. So if we're going to be using the SD card, uh, we kind of need to tell it that that pin can't be just turned off permanently, right? So there is a software control that's with the driver package and that's what this is right here. So when we do the MMC begin, we just do this SD card true and that lets it know that, uh, that we're going to be using the SD card and to basically disable that flash, which is great. So that way it doesn't interfere. Otherwise, you'll get failures. You'll get errors that say um, it can't initialize the SD card. So if you're getting that can't initialize SD card, make sure you're not playing around with uh, digital pin 4 or, or utilizing that in any way. Otherwise, uh, you won't be able to use your SD card properly. Okay, so there's that. So we begin reading it. So we're going to read our config file that's in there. And once we read that, I'll kind of go into this a little bit. Um, I do have this config file. Uh, the function read file that's in here. Uh, this was also uh, borrowed code from another uh, platform. I'll see if I can find the link and put the link down below of where I got all this from because this was so helpful. Um, I got one of the other links for the FTP code that we're going to be using. That's down below as well. So if you want to check out those uh, packages individually. So anyway, we come in here, but we've modified this a little bit. It used to just, it would just print it you know, print it to the serial line. Well, we want to save it into our variables. And so we've got this source file called constant. Now I've modified this as well from its original uh, use. It originally had where you would just put in all of your, your SSID, your password, your FTP server, your username, password, remote, all that stuff. You put all that in uh, here, but I want it to be where you can put that onto a text file onto your SD card and put that in there. So that way uh, you don't have to touch the code once you get it up and running. So I took all of that out, gave it some, some size, some, some, you know, size to the arrays, uh, because I don't know how big people may make their SSIDs or whatever. That's probably excessive, but oh well. So I went ahead and gave it some size, came down in here and this is where, oops, not in here. Go back to the config file back in here where the read file is. Now what it's going to do is we're going to open a file for read is we're going to do, um, and pull open. So that uses our FS open, uh, which is using the SD card, uh, file system to open that up. So once we open that up, then we're going to we're going to print out whether we were able to open it or not. Then we're going to actually start reading it. So we're going to do our file and then dot available, which dot available is basically if there is available characters, it reads it one character at a time. So know that. So if you have something like a text file, which I'll show you what the text file is going to look like, and it's basically spaced out in a column, the different things have a different carriage return. 
remember, it's going to read it all as one giant line. So the carriage returns, everything, it's going to read all of it as just one big line because it's going to go character by character in that file. So we're going to read that into a buffer array. Then we're going to come down here and change that array to string because there's a lot better uh, string functions and, and you know different string manipulation uh, functions uh, that's available in the string.h uh, header file. Uh, so I'm just going to convert that uh, character array into a string called read config. Then what we're going to do is we're going to get down here and we're going to do our begin parsing out our field. So we're going to start parsing it by the equal sign. So now would be a good time to show you the config file. So let me grab a, just a notepad. You can make this however you want. It's going to be just like the variable dec uh, definitions that are in the constants. Um, so let's see where that's a constants. There we go. So it's going to have the same names as these. So what we're going to do is we'll have SSID equals, let's say my network. Sure. <coughs> Excuse me. And then we're going to have pass equals oop, no spaces equals. Let's say uh, password one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. The most secure password in the planet. All right. And then FTP server equals let's say it's 192 and 68.256.0 whatever it might be and then we have ftp uh user oops ftp underscore user and we're going to say that's equal to i don't know my user and then ftp user uh or ftp pass sorry pass and that equals uh, again password 1234 let's say and then we have ftp remote directory and that's going to equal let's say files sure all right so that's our config file right so it's going to be reading all of this information in when we do this so that's basically what we're doing so we're going to basically break it and parse it well if i can stop closing that file um we're going to parse it at the equal signs okay so remember it looks like this and you've got uh all these equal signs so that's what we're going to do we're going to basically start splitting the array and reading what's after the equal signs is what we're going to be doing and then we're going to store that in to uh another array called configs and that's going to be our configuration so that's what this basically loop does <clears throat> is loop through that and parse it then when we're done it's going to basically break everything apart um at the at the equal sign but there's going to be all these carriage returns that are after this because since i'm doing it you know i'm not doing this all rammed together um it's going to have carriage returns in it so i want to get rid of those carriage returns and then any kind of uh new line feed well these are new line feeds uh and then there's actually some spare carriage returns that are left after the line feed so we're just removing all of it so you're going through removing all that then once we're done, then we can actually assign our array. So what we're going to do is now, since the, let's see, let me find it. Where is it at? The, the constants or whatever. Since these are basically chars uh, and they have to be, um, you would have to do some other manipulation to get the string to the char to get it into the different functions that call these variables. But what I did is I just declared them all as char here. <coughs> Excuse me. And then, uh, come in here and basically I just use the two char array so that way it will convert the uh, string which is this configs uh, string it'll convert that into another a char array again and then it'll put it into these different uh, char arrays that I have for the different pieces and that's pretty much it that's pretty much all there is to uh, doing that so that's how the read file works so we read the file set all of our settings once we've set all of our settings then we can initialize the wi-fi we can connect to the wi-fi and then we begin our loop so <clears throat> how this is going to work is we want to check to see if our wi-fi is connected because obviously there's no point in doing anything if wi-fi is not connected and then if it is and the camera initialization went okay that was up here somewhere that was up here <clears throat> if the camera goes okay then we'll go ahead and we'll take a picture and so if we're going to take our picture, oh, up here, sorry, <laughs> I'm scrolling too bad. So um, take a picture here and then we're going to put it to sleep. So we're going to enter the ESP deep sleep, which basically puts it into a very low powered mode. It basically turns off the transmitter uh, for the Wi-Fi and does other things to put it into a very slow, a very deep sleep. It puts the processors to sleep too. So the only thing that's active is um, 
timers can wake it. External wakes could be configured if you wanted to external, like maybe a PIR sensor or something. And let me know in the comments if you want to see how to wake it with a PIR sensor or something like that. Um, that might be another addition to this that we might do later on. But currently, it, we just got it on a timer. So it's going to deep sleep for 60 seconds. And that's the 60 uh, E to the 6 because it's actually in microseconds. So I'm going to say it's 60 you know, million microseconds would be 60 seconds. So basically it's gonna sleep for 60 seconds and then move on. Now, if the Wi-Fi doesn't connect for some reason, it will uh, just immediately go to sleep. And so it will, and inside this Wi-Fi connect, uh, it will try up to, I believe it's like five times, which is why we give it a little bit of sleep here, give it some time to do those trials and whatnot. So it'll try about five times to connect. So then it just enters deep sleep and it'll try again in 60 seconds. So that's pretty much it for the camera. So let's go ahead and compile our code. And just like that, we have success. So there we are. To upload, it's very simple. You just take a uh, USB to serial uh, connector of any kind. Make sure it's five volt. It needs to be a five volt uh, USB to serial connector. Otherwise, you will get uh, the brownout detection. You'll get basically low voltage errors and things like that when you try to flash it. Uh, it basically, it just won't boot. You do have to short a couple of pins, and I'll go over that uh, with you guys in the hardware setup. We'll go to the bench now real quick, and I'll show you how to connect it up so you can, you can flash it. Okay guys, so here is our module. So I got it all put together here. So SD card, now I just could find a 16 gig. You probably should just do a smaller one than that. But uh, anyway, that was what I had laying around. So slides in the back, presses in, you can feel it uh, make contact. This is a pretty simple uh, flat flex uh, cable. Uh, you basically flip that up if you can see that and then you slide the camera module in nice thing about these boards is you can buy different camera modules i don't remember exactly which one this one is is the one that it comes with but anyway on the back here so there's the actual esp32 module so now i've got one of these usb to uh serial type cables here and that's what this this is so i've got uh this little ftdi usb to serial connector thing. So the only pins we're going to need is power and ground, receive and transmit. Okay. So you'll configure this up and I can throw a, uh, a schematic up on the screen here real quick, but you've got your, uh, you got your power and then ground is on the bottom here and then you've got receive and then transmit and that's it. That's all you got to, uh, to connect it with. There is that led I was talking about. That's that really bright one. If you've ever used these boards before, this is really bright cause it's kind of like a flash. I have that disabled because it's on the same pin that controls the micro SD card. So you want to disable that. Now for programming it, you have to jumper a couple of pins. So I'm just using a simple jumper here. Let me back up a little bit. I'm just using a simple uh, jumper wire is what I'm doing. If you have this in a breadboard, you can jumper it that way. If you have one of those little short uh, pin shorters, uh, you could use that. But basically I'm just taking two of these, putting them together like this. And then it's basically, <clears throat> you're going to short the pins. Basically you're gonna skip the first two pins. Let me, let me zoom back in and show you this. So you're gonna skip the first two pins and then it's the next two pins that you're gonna to short together. And then there's a reset button on the back. Once you plug uh, the other end of this in to your PC, you just press that little button, it'll go into program mode, and then you can just program it up. You'll hit build or upload in uh, Platform IO or your Arduino IDE, and it should upload. Once it is finished uploading, you have to remove this jumper and press the reset button one more time to get it to reboot itself and come up not in boot mode, but actually to execute the code. Okay, guys, so I've got, uh, took me a little bit, but I've got our USB cam set up, or at least our uh, ESP32 cam set up. So down here in the corner. So I'm going to go ahead and open a terminal. I do have it plugged in, so we may see it going. I also have a terminal open to a Raspberry Pi that I have this thing uh, Wi-Fi connected to, and it's hosting my FTP server. So uh, I put it in the files directory. And so there's a picture already in there. So I'm going to remove it. So that way we've got nothing in there. And then I'm going to go ahead and turn this on. So let's go ahead and check out how our device is going. So the Wi-Fi did connect. I don't know if you can see that, but the Wi-Fi did connect. 
uh, down there. It's got an IP address, and then it takes it a little bit, and then it will capture a picture. And it looks like it took the picture, Kevin Chaster's success, upload via FTP, no errors, and then it went back to sleep. So now we should be able to pull back up our terminal, and there's our picture. So now I'm going to go grab this picture back off. We'll see how fast I can do this. Okay, so I got WinSCP up here, so I'm just going to log in to that Raspberry Pi that I've got going on here. Okay, so we should be able to see our different directories here. We're gonna back all the way up. Actually, it is in home and, uh, and then me. It'll be in FTP, files, and then there's our image. So I'm just gonna take and put that on my desktop real fast. Let's just throw that over there. All right, let me go grab it. And of course, without uh, a whole lot of lighting, there is our picture. So you can see why we probably are gonna need to do some lighting so you can actually see the camera that's looking over, looking over the desk. But there you have it. There is an image taken. So hopefully, guys, that was useful for you. Make sure to like, subscribe, share, and all that jazz. Make sure and check me out on all the different socials. I'm on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and just and Reddit and pretty much everything. So just check me out on all the socials. I will put links in the description for all this stuff uh, where you can download the code, do the, build uh, this yourself or whatever. But I have links for everything down in the comments below. Also coming up is Maker Faire is coming up next month. Maker Faire down here for uh, Wichita, Kansas. I want to invite everyone out there because I'm going to be giving a giveaway out at Maker Faire. So you can sign up for that and you will get some pretty cool uh, prizes, if not uh, maybe one prize, one big prize, and maybe some little prizes, but you will get some prizes. Uh, so definitely come by, but you can only get those prizes if you come by actual Maker Fair and say hi. So I'll be there at Wichita, Kansas. It'll be an exploration place, which is a museum in, in uh, Wichita, Kansas. But if you want to come visit me, come visit, come check things out. I'd love to see you in person and sign up for the contest and see if you can't win some things. So with that, that ought to do it. I will see you in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.